Have you ever looked at a payware aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator, saw that the price was a little lower than most other aircraft, and haven't heard a whole lot about this particular plane, but thought, how bad could it really be? I thought the same thing when I tried out the virtual call Embraer 190 for Microsoft Flight Simulator, coming in at $16.49, and I thought to myself, I love this plane, it can't be that bad, let me give it a try. And today I wanted to share my review of this plane, and before we get to the actual review of the plane, I have to tell you that I absolutely love the Embraer. I fly it all the time in X-Plane 11 with the SSG-195. Now, in that sim, the SSG is not necessarily known as the best particular aircraft out there. Far from it. I would categorize it as a very good payware aircraft, meaning it's not the best out there. Far from it. But it's also above average. It's certainly good and can do most things competently. And it's a pretty good facsimile of it. It's not study level by any means but it does a pretty good job and I've always enjoyed flying it. So coming over to Microsoft Flight Simulator, well, number one, there wasn't anything else offered. And number two, I figured, well, at least I'd have something to fly. And if we could do the basics, I could live with it. That was my intention coming into it. And having done a couple flights now, or at least trying to do a couple flights with this particular aircraft, it has been a good reminder about why, how bad could it be is pretty much a low bar to set for yourself. So the virtual call Embraer 195 is a representation of the 195, but as soon as you jump into the sim, a couple things jump out at me. Number one, visually, even though this is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this simulator is known for the great visuals, the cockpit visuals, not so much. The outside looks really nice and it's hard not to screw up the outside, but inside the panels and the buttons, they look pretty cartoonish. Uh, the, a lot of them look like something probably out of an older version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In fact, it reminded me a lot of Microsoft Flight Simulator X. So not a great representation, certainly. Now, granted, I paid $16, and that's going to be the mantra of this video when we talk about what it has and doesn't have. If you're looking for a manual for this plane, you're not going to find one. I couldn't find one. There are some tutorial YouTube videos, about seven videos that cover some real basics of it. Now, I would think I'm lucky because I knew how to fly the plane or at least start it up based on my experience in X-Plane. And the procedures that I learned in X-Plane pretty much follow what the experience like here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But off the bat, there's a couple things that I noticed almost immediately. Number one, there's no way to enter your fuels and weights through the plane itself. Of course, you know, I'm used to flying the uh, fly-by-wire A320neo, which has an EFB, and you can do everything within the plane. Yeah, not so much here. You're gonna be using the default Microsoft Flight Simulator for the the weights and the fuels that's not at the end of the world i mean it's fine i can deal with that and certainly i did but it became very clear that this is basically a remodeling of i assume the default a320 that comes with microsoft flight Simulator. i say that because a lot of the visuals primarily in the pfd look like something out of an airbus and not an Embraer. the actual fmc itself the flight computer it does not look anything like the honeywell that an Embraer uses and so pretty quickly I discovered, well, I'm really not flying the E-190. I'm flying what I think is an A320 with a different look to it, which is pretty common with a lot of, I hate to say it, substandard or not as high fidelity payware aircraft in the sim. Now, this is not a knock on virtual call. Again, I paid $16 for this. And so it's not like I paid $50 or $100 or anything like that. I, I came in with very low expectations, but it quickly became apparent that this was not going to be anything remotely resembling the quality that I had been used to in X-Plane in terms of the systems and fidelity. But I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll live with this, right? Now, I wanted to fly this on VATSIM because I do enjoy flying online, and that's part of the fun for me and having the control and the different aircraft in the area. And, and one bug that I just could not figure out is the comms and the radios. There's no way to see the last two digits in what you're adjusting to. So if you're trying to get to... 134.700, good luck. You have to guess on it and then re-verify in your vPilot that you actually are in the right one. And then even worse, I can live with that bug. I cannot live with the fact that the squawk function doesn't work at all. There is no way to set a transponder code. It's just broken. I tried many times. It wouldn't work. Luckily, I found that there in vPilot, there are inherent commands to change both the radios and the transponder codes within the vPilot client. Thank God, because there was no way that I could figure out how to do that. In terms of the flight planning, you know, it was pretty much like, well, it was like planning an Airbus route more than anything else. 
I also could not for the life of me figure out how to put in an airway. I could put it in the beginning of the airway or the end of the airway, and it would actually show the airway that I was trying to put in there, but it would never actually populate the in-between part of the actual airway itself. And I, it just kept on giving me the same error. I tried many times and it never worked. I tried in different flights and it, it, I assume it's a bug. I know that when I first downloaded this plane, it was right when Sim Update 9 came out and I broke the plane. So I put it up to the side for a little bit. That's why this review is coming out a little later. And then when Virtual Call issued a new update, it still didn't work. So I have no idea how the airways are supposed to work. On a very basic flight, we were doing in this particular example, Boston to Washington National. You know, there was only one airway and there was no ATC. So luckily I was able to just go direct and no one noticed it. But on a more complicated flight, this would not work at all. As I said before, most of the systems are pretty much just the Airbus. It's not an Embraer at all. So really what you're flying is something that looks like an Embraer, but it's really not an Embraer. But if you want to fly an Embraer in Microsoft Fly Simulator, this is what you're relegated to. So once I did the basics, I got my <laughs> botched flight plan in there. I got my performance data in there. I pushed back from the gate and I was on my way. There were a couple of errors that never disappeared from the main screen. I don't know why it kept on warning me about the APU not being present because I was already on engine power and I turned off the APU. Who knows? Of course, there's no way to know because there's no manual to be able to verify that the procedure I was following was correct. But I was able to enter my takeoff speeds and I was able to take off and taxi. Taxiing was quite an adventure. In many cases, I would quickly be taking turns and it looked like I was Tokyo drifting around. Again, I paid $16 for the aircraft. And then once up in the air, it followed the path. There was no VNAV in this particular aircraft. So I had to manage my descent on my own. Luckily, a pretty easy descent into the Washington National Airspace. You have to follow just a couple of basics, but I essentially just relied on the vertical speed to get me down to the proper altitudes. I did not hit them exactly on the nose. Again, luckily for me, there was no air traffic control on, and my landing was absolutely terrible. As you can see in this video, I'm going to blame the fact that even while on the localizer, it still did a terrible job of getting me there. I think there was a little bit of a wind, but... Honestly, this plane's dynamics were not great. So overall, the, what I can tell you about the Virtual Call Embraer 190, and they also have different versions like the 170 and other variations of it that you can possibly purchase. If you're sitting yourself and thinking, how bad could it possibly be? It's pretty bad. I would not recommend it. Even at $16, as somebody who loves the E190 and flying it all the time in X-Plane, I, I just would never recommend this to anybody. It's just one of the classic examples of what makes a good payware aircraft versus not. And in this scenario, I just can't recommend it in its current form. My hope is that Virtual Call or some other developer will take the time to make a proper version of it that essentially is not a different model on top of a different aircraft, and that makes sense. I applaud them for trying their best to make it out there, and I understand not every single aircraft can be super high fidelity, but this was a good reminder to myself about how and why that just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's going to be effective. And at the end of the day, I probably won't be flying it anytime soon, if at ever at all. My only hope is that there will be a more cohesive update coming in the future that will grant it just some basic functionality that makes it feel and operate a little more close to the real thing. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had experience with either this plane or some of the other notable aircraft that come in at a very cheap price and don't really perform up to standards. It is kind of surprising. It also is really, to me, an example of the old style payware aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator when it first came out. There were a lot of planes that came out and they just weren't the same. But now, hopefully, with the new aircraft coming out, maybe the future is brighter. Who knows? Thank you for watching this video. If you did find it enjoyable, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Hotchmania, and we'll talk again real soon.